guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering bipolar disorders. Now, yes, bipolar is part of mood disorders, and I've already done a video on mood disorders, but bipolar disorders is such a special disorder, I felt like um, this disorder actually needed a video on its own. So this is going to be a short video, but there's some very important concepts as a nursing student you absolutely must know in regards to patients who are bipolar. So guys, without any further ado, let's get started. First question. A highly agitated client paces a unit and states, I could buy and sell this place. The client's mood fluctuates from fits of laughter to outbursts of anger. Which is the most accurate documentation of this client's behavior? A, rates mood eight, to ten, eight out of 10, exhibiting looseness of association, euphoric. B, mood euthymic, exhibiting magical thinking, restless. C, mood labile, exhibiting delusions of reference, hyperactive. Or D, agitated and pacing, exhibits grandiosity, mood label. If you're new to my channel, guys, and you feel like I'm going too fast, just press the pause button, reread the question and your choices. And whenever you're ready, press play and we will resume. Okay, guys, so the correct answer is D, agitated and pacing exhibits a grandiosity, a mood label. Now, how do we know that D is the correct answer? Let's look at D, agitated and pacing. It's very clear that this patient's irritated. Okay, if you look at the question, it says that the patient is agitated. They are irritated and they're pacing. Let me tell you something. In nursing, pacing is never a good thing. When you see a patient pacing, you better be prepared to protect the other clients on the unit, to protect yourself, and to protect the patient. Because when a patient is pacing, that's just anger and aggression building up. And that's the outward sign letting you know that it's about to go down. Okay. So agitated and pacing, exhibiting grandiosity. What is grandiosity? That's when the patients have these delusions that they're so much better than everyone else. So um, they have these delusions that they're best friends with Oprah Winfrey or that they're multimillionaires or that they're the president of the United States or that they're Jesus Christ. Okay. So that's grandiosity. And this patient is exhibiting grandiosity. This patient saying I could buy and sell this place. Okay and mood label. What does label mean? That means your mood is like this. You're happy, then you're sad. Then you're happy, then you're sad. Then you're happy, then you're sad. We don't know which way you're going to go in the next second. And that's exactly what the situation that's been given to us describes. So the correct answer is D. Next question. A client diagnosed with bipolar disorder is distraught over insomnia experienced over the last three nights and a 12 pound weight loss over the past two weeks. Which should be the client's priority nursing diagnosis? A, knowledge deficit related to bipolar disorder. AEB, I have no idea what this AEB is. What's AEB stand for? I don't know. AEB, concern about symptoms. B, altered nutrition, lessened body weights related to hyperactivity, AEB, weight loss. C, a risk for suicide related to powerlessness, AEB, insomnia, and anorexia. D, altered sleep patterns related to mania, AEB, insomnia for the past three nights. Now, guys, I'm going to show you without me even knowing what AEB means, I can still come to the correct answer. And you can do the same thing as well. Now, by the way, if anybody knows what this AEB is, please drop a comment for me and let me know because I have no clue. I just don't. I'll never lie to you. If I don't know something, I'll tell you that. All right. Anyway, the correct answer, guys, is B, altered nutrition, lessened body weights, um, body requirements related to hyperactivity, AEB, weight loss. How is this a priority? Let me tell you something. If you're new to my channel and uh, you haven't watched any of my videos on priority or delegation, I highly, highly, highly um, suggest, encourage that you do so. Okay. So just very quickly, I'll give you a little recap. A priority patient is always going to be a patient that number one, something's actively going on with them right now. So we're not worried about the future. Our priority is going to be what's going on with the patient right now, right? That's one of the things that's going to be a priority. A second thing that's going to be a priority is 
anything that will um, affect the patient's physiological integrity, okay? Anything that will affect that patient staying alive, such as them breathing, such as a vital sign, such as fluid electrolytes, such as glucose, such as nutrition, right? Anything that physically keeps that patient alive, if something is um, putting that in danger, that's going to be a priority for us. Now, when we look at all of our choices, you have knowledge deficit, altered nutrition, risk for suicide, altered sleep patterns. As a student, automatically you should have gotten rid of knowledge deficit and altered sleep patterns, right? Because we have some more serious things going on. You should have been between altered nutrition and risk for suicide, right? Here's how you know the answer is altered nutrition and not risk for suicide. And they put risk for suicide in there to trick you because you're thinking, okay, suicide, what could be worse than that? But go back to the question. Is there anything in that question that makes us think this patient's at a risk for suicide? There's absolutely nothing. Let me explain something to you. Patients who are at risk for suicide are extremely depressed. Patients that are extremely dep depressed Yes, they have anger. Yes, they have aggression, but it's turned inward, not outward. It's turned inward. I'm so dumb. I'm so ugly. I'm such a loser. Nobody likes me. They see no value in themselves whatsoever. That's why they feel like they're better off dead. Okay. But let's look at this situation. It says that they're distraught over their insomnia. If they're distraught over their insomnia, they find themselves worthy enough to be getting sleep, don't they? Right? They're distraught over their insomnia for the last three days and a 12 pound weight loss. They're distraught about losing weight. So guess what? That's not somebody who wants to die. They want to live. That's why they're so distraught. So they're not at risk for suicide. Guys, it has to make sense to you. Don't choose something just because you see it there. It has to make sense. This patient's not at risk for suicide, so we're going to get rid of that. What we're worried about is the altered nutrition because guess what? Altered nutrition can kill a person. If they don't have enough vitamins, nutrients, minerals in their body, yes, that can kill them. Okay? So that's why being is um, our answer, okay? That's our number one priority. And immediately following B would have been sleep patterns. Why? Because patient that can't, patients that um, um, have insomnia and have not slept for an extended amount of time, eventually what do they do? They'll crash, okay? They, the body will crash and um, uh, they may go, depending on what's going on with them, they may go into seizures, their heart may stop. Lots of issues can happen with this type of patient with extreme fatigue. Because many times with extreme fatigue comes what? Patient hasn't eaten, no nutrition, okay? I gotta do a video on that. That's another video all on its own. But, I mean, after nutrition, it would have been sleep because yes, sleep is part of physiologic integrity. It's not up there like nutrition is. It's not up there like fluid and electrolytes is. It's not up there like glucose is or vital signs, but it is on that list. If you haven't done so already, make sure you check out my video on, um, what was the video I did, what's it called? Uh, priority, priority and delegation, okay? All right, next question. A nurse is planning care for a client diagnosed with bipolar disorder, manic phase. In which order should the nurse prioritize the client outcomes in this exhibit, in the exhibit, excuse me. Client outcomes. One, maintains nutritional status. Two, interacts appropriately with peers. Three, remains free from injury. Four, sleep six to eight hours a night. And I'll give you guys a moment to think of your answer. All right, guys, so the correct answer is three, or C, I should say, three, one, four, two. So let's talk about it. The very first thing you're going to do, and that's the very first priority you're going to have, keep the patient free from injury. We don't care about anything else if that patient is injured, right? We need to keep that patient first. That is our first priority. Immediately after we make sure that our patient is free from injury, 
nutritional status. I talked to you about the importance of nutritional status. After nutritional status is sleep. And I talked to you how nutrition is going to go before sleep does. There you go. And last, socialization. Yes, we care about it, but socialization never killed anybody. So priority is always going to be what can kill a patient first, right? And then we worry about everything else. Next question. A client diagnosed with bipolar disorder, depressive phase intentionally overdoses on sertraline Zoloft. Family members report that the client has experienced anorexia, insomnia, and recent job loss. What should be the priority nursing diagnosis for this client? A, risk for suicide related to hopelessness. B, anxiety related to hyperactivity. C, imbalanced nutrition or lessened body requirements related to refusal to eat. D, dysfunctional grieving related to loss of employment. All right, guys, the correct answer is A, risk for suicide related to hopelessness. Well, Professor D, how do we know they're at risk for suicide? It says in the question, intentionally overdoses. They were trying to kill themselves. There's no question about it, okay? So that's going to be our first priority, right? Because yeah, suicide is something that can kill a patient, okay? So that's our first priority. Immediately after that, if you had to choose a second one, it would have been nutrition because yes, nutrition can kill a patient too if they don't have enough of it. So the correct answer is A, risk for suicide. A client diagnosed with bipolar one disorder, manic episode, refuses to take lithium carbonate due to excessive weight gain. In order to increase compliance, which medication should a nurse anticipate that a physician will prescribe? A, Zoloft, B, Depakote, C, Disrel, or D, Paxil. All And the correct answer is B, valproic acid, also known as Depakote. Now, guys, even though this is an anti-seizure drug, it's an anti-epileptic, it's often um, prescribed for the bipolar patients because of the side effect of what? Weight loss. So those patients who are non-compliant because of the weight gain, um, the physician or the nurse practitioner, they tend to um, also add the Depakote, so... Um, because of that side effect of weight loss so that the patient be more compliant to uh, take their meds because some patients are so distraught over that side effect, side effect that they just stop taking their meds. And these type patients need to take their meds because what happens is when they stop, all of those symptoms come back. Um, there's something else before I just turn, uh, um, go to the next question. There's something else that I wanted to talk to you guys about when it comes to lithium. Some very important concepts you have to know about lithium. Any patient that's on lithium needs to be drinking lots of fluids, okay? They cannot afford to get dehydrated because getting dehydrated, excuse me, um, getting dehydrated can make that lithium more um, concentrated. So patients need to drink lots and lots and lots of fluids and we want them to drink fluids so it can flush their system as well. That's number one. Number two, any patient that's taking lithium, you better be watching their serum level of lithium, okay? Because lithium has a very narrow therapeutic range. If you guys haven't um, watched my video on pharmacology, I talk about um, narrow therapeutic ranges and important meds to know with narrow, th narrow therapeutic ranges, and lithium's one of them, okay? Lithium has a therapeutic range of 0 0.6 to 1.2, all right? very narrow. And while that patient's on that med, we have to make sure that it's between that 0 0.6 to 1.2. All right. Anything higher than 1.2 is not therapeutic any, anymore. They have too high of a dosage. And once they hit 1.5, they've reached toxic levels. Okay. So narrow therapy, uh, therapeutic range, excuse me, 0 0.6 to 1.2. Toxic is toxic is 1.5 or higher. So that's the second thing. What was the third thing? I want third. Okay. Um, when it comes to lithium, you also have to be looking out for the sodium level. 
okay um if you haven't done so already make sure you guys catch my fluid and electrolytes video but sodium is what 135 to 145 that is the range for sodium if the patient's sodium is less than 135 hyponatremia that can cause the patient to go into lithium toxicity and if the sodium is higher than 145 hypernatremia that can cause the patient to have a subtherapeutic range okay so it's very important lithium watch the sodium lots of fluids and watch the serum um lithium level of 0 0.6 to 1.2 A client diagnosed with bipolar 1 disorder is, the, is exhibiting severe manic behaviors. A physician prescribes lithium carbonate and Zyprexa. The client spouse questions the Zyprexa order. Which of the appropriate nursing, which of, oh gosh, I can't speak. Which is the appropriate nursing response? A, Zyprexa in combination with lithium cures manic symptoms. B, Zyprexia prevents extrapyramidal side effects. C, Zyprexa ensures a good night's sleep. Or D, Zyprexa calms hyperactivity until the lithium effect takes place. And the correct answer is D, okay? So guys, across the board, each med is different. But just generally speaking, across the board, when it comes to psych meds, they usually don't start to take effect where the patient will start to see a difference until four to six weeks of them taking that med. It takes four to six weeks for a patient to start seeing outward symptoms that the med's working, right? But when we're talking about, which may we talk about lithium, it takes one to two weeks just for that, um, that medication to be in that patient's uh, system. They might not start seeing an outward effect yet, but just for it to be in their system, it takes about two weeks. So what happens is we give the Zyprexa because it causes, it decreases what? Hyperactivity. So we give the Zyprexa as a bridge. So we're giving it until the lithium kicks in because Zyprexa has that great effect of decreasing that hyperactivity that the patient has. So we give it until the lithium kicks in and um, we start to see that effect. So we really give it as a bridge type of medication, okay? A client began taking lithium for the treatment of bipolar disorder approximately a month ago. The client states if it, the client asks if it is normal to have gained 12 pounds in this time frame. Which is appropriate nursing response? A, that's strange. Weight loss is a typical pattern. B, what have you been eating? Weight gain is not usually associated with lithium. C, weight gain is a common but troubling side effect. D, weight gain only occurs during the first month of treatment with this drug. Sorry, I don't know how a fly, something got in here, it's buzzing. Do flies bug, buzz or mosquitoes? I think flies, something's buzzing. Okay guys, so the correct answer is C, weight gain is a common but troubling side effect. Uh, duh, that's why we give Depakote with it, okay? You think about what the lithium does. You have this patient, bipolar, they're going, 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 going. They're hyperactive. And what do we give the lithium for? Slow everything down guess what also slows down the patient's metabolism all right their gi tract so they're keeping food in their body longer it takes longer for them to break that food down it even takes longer for them to excrete it so they tend to gain weight from that medication a client's diagnosed with bipolar disorder has been taking lithium for one year the client presents to the er with a temperature of 101 Severe diarrhea, blurred vision, and tinnitus. How should the nurse interpret these symptoms? A, symptoms indicate consumption of foods high in ty ty tyramine. B, symptoms indicate lithium carbonate discontinuation syndrome. C, symptoms indicate the development of lithium carbonate tolerance. Or D, symptoms indicate lithium carbonate toxicity.
And the correct answer is D, symptoms indicate lithium carbonate toxicity. I already told you what the normal range was, right? 0 0.6 to 1.2. That's your range when you're higher than 1.5 1, 1 or higher, you're toxic. But let's go to this question. Look at what they're telling us. So we know that the patient's been taking lithium for an extended amount of time. It's a year. High temperature. Let's say you didn't get it yet. Let's keep moving. Not just diarrhea, severe diarrhea. Let's say you still didn't get it. Here's what should have clued you in that patient's having toxicity. Blurred vision and tinnitus. When it comes to blurred vision and tinnitus across the board, we tend to see that in what? Toxicity. Whatever that patient is taking, if they have too much in, the, in their system, we tend to see blurred vision and ringing in the ears, the tinnitus. So even if you didn't know that the high temperature and the severe diarrhea were signs and symptoms of toxicity, the minute you saw tinnitus or the minute you saw blurred vision, you should have guessed the correct answer, which is toxicity, okay? So what does this mean? This means that most likely their serum level is way higher than 1.5. A nursing instructor is discussing various challenges in the treatment of clients diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Which student statement demonstrates an understanding that the most critical challenge in the care of these clients? A, treatment is compromised when clients can't sleep. B, treatment is compromised when irritability interferes with social interactions. C, treatment is compromised when the clients have no insight into their problems. D, treatment is compromised when clients choose not to take their medications. And you guys all should have the correct answer because I accidentally gave you the answer to this question when I was explaining another rationale. And the answer is D. Treatment's compromised when clients choose not to take their meds. Why? Because the minute they stop taking their meds, those symptoms come back. Okay? So medication is the cornerstone of treatment for patients with bipolar disorder. And I feel like this happened so fast, guys, but we are down to our last question. A client's diagnosed with bipolar disorder, manic phase. Which nursing intervention would be implemented to achieve the outcome of client will gain two pounds by the end of the week? A, provide client with high, high calorie finger food throughout the day. B, accompany client to cafeteria to encourage adequate dietary consumption. C, initiate total parental nutrition to meet dietary needs. Or D, teach the importance of very diet, diet to meet nutritional needs. And the correct answer is A, guys. Give them high um, um, nutritional, high calorie foods. Finger foods. Why? Because like I said, the bipolar... Pop, pop, cl the bi polar client that's in the manic phase, you can't get them to sit down for one second. They're going, 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 and everything is going, guys. Physically, they're on the run, right? But mentally, their brain is going, they're going to talk you to death a mile a minute, right? Heart rate is through the roof. Blood pressure through the roof. Even their gut is going, going, going. This patient has diarrhea all the time because everything in their body is in overdrive. You cannot get this patient to sit down and eat a meal. So what you're going to do is give them high calorie finger foods. So while they're running all over the place, they can eat a sandwich. While they're running all over the place, you can give them bottled water to drink because they're not going to slow down or stop. So while they're running, you're running with them trying to give them the finger food. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the bipolar patient. Please don't forget, leave comments below. Let me know what you think about this video. If you haven't done so already, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you press that red notification button so you'll be notified every single time a new video is released. Thank you so much for spending this time with me, and I'll see you on the next video.